Welcome to Your Health in Your Hands. I'm Dr. David Ajibade, and we will be continuing our talk on sickle cell disease. Remember, June 19th is the World Sickle Cell Day, and we are doing an outreach in Abuja and in Lagos. So you can get that information on our website, which is www.brainandbodyfoundation.org. We're giving out free medications, and you'll see some of the videos that we've had um, for people who have benefited from this. So um, you stand a lot to gain, so you can share that with your family and friends. All right, we are in this one, this segment or this episode, we're going to be talking about how to thrive with sickle cell disease. And then on our you know, studio today, uh, on this episode again, is Mrs. Divan Mom. Hi. Good to have you back. Thank you, Doc. And it's not like you ever went away. But <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> But uh, this last the last se session was really, really good. I think a lot of people benefited from it. I and hope so. I'm sure they did. And so we, we, what we want to do now is really want to dig into your wide experience in terms of living with the condition and just thriving with it. Because quite clearly, you've done really, really well. Um, you're, you're living your life at your own terms. And yeah. you have a child who is also doing very well. She's doing what is studying her master's now. Mm -hmm. So you've, yeah, I mean, you have no, not much to complain about, right? Actually, I don't. Uh, all praises to God. And, uh, of course, to parents who made sure mm -hmm. that I was made to live as normal a life as possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, growing up, I was very, very sickly. Hmm. Yeah, but I found that, that I had parents who were firm enough to say, "Okay, yeah, we know you experience bouts of illness, mm -hmm. but that should not define your personhood. That should not be de what defines how you live your life." So my parents made sure I had as normal a life as possible, which included doing age and capacity appropriate chores. So I was not allowed to laze around while other people were working. I had to be sick. I had to be on admission mm. to not be doing some chore. Mm. Yeah, really? it, it was that basic because if I got discharged from hospital today, by the next day, I was running small, small errands. By the day after, depending on how well I was doing, I was back to my routine. You know, wow. basic chores, yeah. Wow, so they didn't pamper you up? No, 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 not at all. And if, your parents. Yeah, and if I was not hospitalized, you know, like maybe I woke up with a temperature, I'd get a tablet of Panadol and get sent to school. Hmm. Yeah. So I, I, I quickly learned that um, I could not, at least with my parents, I couldn't, you know, wrap anything around emotional blackmail of, oh, I'm really sick, and uh -uh. my mother was a nurse. She could tell if you were really sick. <laughs> so if you were not really sick, you were, you know, required to be up and about. Great. And it Great. has helped me. It, helped, it has helped me in my workplace. It has helped me in my home, in my marriage. Mm. Like when I had my hip surgery, I'd stand on my crutches and cook. Wow. Yeah. You so know. Your husband didn't pamper you. He still made you do, do all this. He didn't make me do all those things. It's what I'm used to. Right. So I, 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 I have to be really, really busy doing something else to sit around and watch, you know, something going on in the domestic space and not get up and be help of it. and be part of it. I just don't know how. It's mentally something that I'm, I can't do. Hmm. So I live a very normal life. I live with the reality of the fact that the fact that I'm born genotype SS does not mean people who were not born genotype SS are having a stroll in the park with their health. There are people who are diabetic, yeah. people who, are, who have blood pressure issues, cancer, leprosy, epilepsy, and all, people have health challenges yeah. that I wouldn't even want to change places with. Right. So yeah. I try my best not to get carried away with, oh, I was born genotype SS, and everybody has one thing or another. Yeah, in true. fact, there are people who are perfectly healthy that I wouldn't change places with because of other things that are going on in their life. So that's very important. So, so I love that attitude because that attitude does give you a sense of taking charge, taking yeah. charge of your health. And that's really what we, we want to pass across to our viewers, that you need to take charge. And if you're a parent, don't pamper your kid. Make sure that they understand that there's a, a difficult world out there and they will not, your parents will not always be with you. 
and the pa and parents really need to remember that they need to be able to struggle for themselves and certain of course within limitations obviously i mean some kids are much would have been much worse off than what um this day with a certain sickle cell disorder condition some have um, they just walk a few m minutes and they're already having major issues so we understand that but on the study of kids uh, see how far they can go and push them and then when you, when you see you push, push them too far, you back off, but ensure that they uh, understand that you're trying to prepare them for the world outside yeah. because it's not going to be fair on them. Yeah. And from my little experience with uh, uh, being genotype SS, even if you do absolutely nothing and just sit around, you will get sick. <laughs> so you yeah. might as well just you know, get well. up and live. Might as well. Live, play, but within reason. So let's talk about some of the things that you would advise um, okay, at work, we, we said we'll say a few things about workplace and mm -hmm. how to um, handle it at workplace, but also about what the government, in your opinion, should be um, policies that should be in place for West Coast South Disease Concert. Yeah, at uh, the workplace, please don't pretend, don't hide it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do not, for instance, apply for a job and maybe during the interview when they ask you, is there any other thing you need to know? Well, I don't know, I'm perfectly... No. Mm -hmm. Let them know that, yeah, this is your situation, mm -hmm. but then you're perfectly functional. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you need some kind of support, you can also let them know that this is the kind of support I need to really function, but in, any, in every other way, I will not be a liability to the organization. Don't keep it a so secret. be upfront with it. Be, be upfront with it. Okay. Um, in my case, I have been very lucky. Mm. I've never hidden it, and I've never been discriminated against by my bosses. Mm. Now, colleagues who are trying to get one up over you, mm. you know, will go around behind you and say stupid stuff like, eh, are you really sure you want to give her this assignment? You know, she's genotype herself, she might not be able to handle it. But I see that as just being stupid and spiteful, mm. not necessarily from a place of they really believe I won't be able to deliver. Mm -hmm. So I've never had any issue with organizations or bosses. A few colleagues have been snide and snippy, but that's a function of who they are as people. So, Do you have to take a bottle of water everywhere you, you went to? There was a time when I was doing that. Okay. And then I'd also have the unfortunate and unpleasant task of looking for places to pee. <laughs> yeah? And, you know, uh, women's fashion is not very forgiving when it comes to things like that. Uh, not only is also not very forgiving when it comes to things like that. So after a while, I jettisoned the water. Oh, dear. You know, I do what I... I can at home yeah. and just wing it during the rest of the day. Wow, mm. must have been tough. Yeah, it was tough. You know, like this skirt, for instance, is pretty tight. So imagining being hard pressed, trying to, and it, 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 it's not practical. Gosh, it's not practical. <laughs> <laughs> that is the life I see. All right, so government policies, what do we need to do? What, how do we make it b b a better place for, for our children and, our, and our adults living with sickle cell disease? What do you think? I think right now it's uh, at the workplace, I think it's okay. There's nothing, there's no, um, let's say, institutionalized stigma okay. for people of genotype SS. Okay. There, there, there is a little of it with HIV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we, we don't see that with genotype SS. So for me, I would be more inclined to say that government should work toward, you know, coming up with policies that ensure that uh, children are regularly tested for their genotype, right from when they're small. Now, when I say regularly, it's because I've encountered situations where people swear that they had multiple tests before marriage, and then after marriage, they somehow produced an SS baby and went back for a test and discovered both of them were carrying the S gene the whole time. Yeah. So I so don't know. a lot of false, uh, it's an accuracy problem. I mean, the, the, the sensitivity problem. Many labs claim they do accurate genotype testing, and the truth is they don't. They don't. don't. And, and they're ruining people's lives. They are ruining people's lives. So I, I, in fact, in my opinion, one of the policies I open in places that you, you cannot claim to have a good po policy. I mean, you cannot, you cannot claim to have genotype testing if it's not at least 98.5% uh -huh. accurate. So whoever so is in charge of that, NAFDAC or whoever, maybe these labs need to be, yeah. or if it comes to, more, I think. Yeah, or maybe special labs should be designated yes, for, for genotype, for gen, for genotype right. tests and they and should be available. And subsidize it too. So and heavily subsidize it. So people can have access to it. Yeah. I think that's very important. It's causing, I mean, I've had many patients too who come and it was, I mean, it's the same blank 
bewildered expression mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. we did this this i mean educated people well educated well informed they would do all the tests and they'll still have a child with i, I actually scolded my doctor when i discovered that his son yeah was genital process i said dude <laughs> you are a doctor your wife is a nurse yeah you don't have an excuse he said i do because when we had our tests before marriage we were both aa <laughs> And they'd already had four kids before this one popped up and it was SS. I can do one better than you. I, I have a, one of my classmates, my, both my classmates both, were both AS and they, 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 I think there was a struggle for a while, decided to go along with it. But long story for that one. But wow. <laughs> all right, we're going to have to take a break here. We're going to introduce, um, you're going to see a couple of videos and we will be right back. My Peking, they see all the time. Go to school, where they go? I go back home. Go to school. If I go carry on for school, I go back home. But she continued to seek. I can't tell my teacher in the school. She can't look at uh, Facebook. She see this uh, company for Facebook. She tell me, say, Mommy Timile, I say, Ma. He say she see message you for so 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 about your me, Lagos, for about this medicine. I say, It's okay. Which time I go go now? She give me, he collect address. He, he say, he Give me address. I tell my sister, say, see, so, 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 I go that day. The that day, me, I go. I go there. I see doctor. Before, before, to write for school, no way. But I, I can't call that doctor back, say, see, so, 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 my picking, oh, you know, now, you know, chap for book for school. Say, make a no word. Say, make a they use them, and they give them. One in the morning, one in the evening. Later, I go back, go collect another one. He say, make a they give them. Morning, afternoon, evening, I they give him. You not do anything. In body change, he they eat. Everything change to play gun. Everything change for in body. But I thank God. Say she did her life. Myself, I did her life to stand to talk. Say I see the thing when I God do for me because of this. this. <laughs> that testimony I mean, it's just, I mean, she's just a delight I would do anything for her so um, I just wanted to use this brief segment to talk about our approach with the Brain and Body Foundation and I think it's something that we really want to share with healthcare professionals and parents around the country because uh, when it comes to certain principles sickle cell disease is not really that big a deal if you understand what to do about it and I know that some people will argue with it and all that but yeah, I mean, there's some things you can do and one of them is simply improving the immune system in her case um, our daughter's case was simply strengthening the immune system and there are certain nutrients you can use to do that uh, we use high quality ones but you can also we found out that something something as cheap as vitamin d can also help with strengthening the immune system um, there are about four main areas four main areas that you want to pay attention to uh, when it comes to sickle cell disease and it's on your slide so one is immune system we mentioned that number two is oxidative stress or free radical damage um, if you go to our website we explain some of those number three is inflammation most of ki most kids with sickle cell disease and adults are, have severely inflamed blood vessels and organs and that can be addressed and number four is that most people have reduced nitric oxide nitric oxide uh, is what helps to improve um, dilate the blood vessels and allows blood to flow more readily and so in, in children with sickle cell disease adults with sickle cell disease those numbers are reduced we can address that uh, tri triggers when it comes to triggers of sickle cell crises you want to avoid dehydration that's why you have to take plenty of water you want to ensure that the child is always having um, <clears throat> doesn't have any problems breathing, uh, be out in the sunshine as much as possible. Uh, another, another thing is infection. So we know that when people have malaria or typhoid, whatever it is, it triggers a crisis. So we want to avoid that as well. So, um, but nutrients, again, there's going to be a list. I'm going to ask them to put up a list of some of the top nutrient deficiencies. If all you do all you do is just supplement and ensure that they have the basic minimum of these. And I think it's better you supplement than actually um, force a child to eat food because as we've heard, many children don't really like to eat proper food. So you supplement and uh, again, it's on, the sc on your screen. You have zinc, magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin C, 
and um, omega-3 fatty acids, a huge one. That's actually how we found out that we could help sickle, train with sickle cell disease because omega-3 fatty acids seem to do, make a huge difference. As always, make sure you check with your doctor, and uh, we will continue in shortly. Now I'm 20 years of age, diagnosed with sickle cell anemia. I last had my crisis in 2014, before I met the Brain and Body Foundation. I usually have fatigue in school, and I usually get tired easily. And I used to fall, e I used to fall ill a lot. I also had problem with my eyes. I couldn't see very well. I used to use glasses a lot back then. But since I came in contact with the Brain and Body Foundation, they gave me some supplements. And since then, everything has become better. I'm more, I'm stronger and agile. I don't fall sick easily anymore, and it has helped me improve more in my schoolwork since then. And I hardly use my glasses anymore. Twelve years old, I'm a sickle cell person. I, I have crashes last year, December, but when I come to Brown and Body Foundation, I now have crashes. And I, I don't used to bend down, but now I used to bend down. I don't used to jump, but now I used to jump. I am, I, I when we were in school, I used to down, used to pick my pen, but some, now I used to pick my pen by myself. I want to thank Brown and Body Foundation for all what you have done for me. Welcome back. Okay, so we have tons and tons of testimonials like that. Remember, every Friday in Abuja here, we, we open the clinic free, free treatments. Everything is free. Just walk in, and uh, if you have sickle cell disease especially, we will help you. So we want to talk about, on that note, we want to talk about the poor. Um, I, I read it somewhere, um, Divan, that, uh, that's, that you can tell the health or the, how good a nation is by how much care they take for the they, they they put towards the poor and um, I think we really want to emphasize some things because uh, organizations NGOs they represent so supposedly they represent the poor don't they and um, they, they I mean many of them do and some of the things they try to do try to get medications they try to get treatment for these for, for, for people who cannot get it themselves so I want to, I want to say let's, let's 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 be more targeted now that we know that nutrition plays a key role in um, sickle cell disease. We now know that, or we've always known that um, fluids, having water, um, good drinking water, plays a key role in sickle cell disease. Then one of the things that I feel NGOs should do in addition to all the advocacy and in addition to all the other things that they're doing is to help provide for these things. Like for instance now, people don't, uh, we know what drinking water is good, but many times portable, healthy drinking water is not even available. And so some of these people do not even drink that water because of how bad it is. And if they have sickle cell disease, they're more prone to crisis. What do you think? It's a good one, but it's a bit um, knowing how the NGO circle functions. Yeah. There's very limited to no funding hmm. for NGOs that want to do stuff about sickle cell. Yeah. Most of the funding is uh, focused in things like HIV and TV, so on and so forth, TB, yeah. malaria and so on and so yeah. forth. So an NGO that wants to do something revolving around sickle cell disease would have to find a way to siphon money out of another project mm. into doing something for sickle cell mm. and that is unethical. Mm. It's unethical. So I think that's one of the reasons why. And also, I believe, I'm not trying to be hard with my words here, um, genotype SS is something that affects mostly people of the black race. Yes. Yeah? I understand. Nigeria is number one in the world, by the way. Uh, maybe because of our huge population? Mm -hmm. Or? Uh, huge black people. I think, and also because of sub the sub Saharan region is where, I mean, they talk about uh, evolution and how we had, to, we had to develop the AS to protect us against malaria. Malaria and so on. So that's why we have to make it with, with, uh -huh. with AS. And it's not something you can pass on. Mm -hmm. except to your kids right yeah so it's not contagious yeah and so on and so forth so people are more I, I think the funding the donors are more interested in finding ways to prevent um, sicknesses or illnesses diseases whatever the appropriate word is that you can pass to them yeah I mean, if you travel with HIV and you're running around doing your stuff, yes. you will pass it around. Exactly. But if you travel with your genotype SS, whatever you're doing, and in fact, if you 
you know, marry somebody of a different race, chances of you having genotype SS kids is slim to zero. So yeah? it's, it's not a big, it's not too much it's of a priority. It's not a high priority thing for them. So if it bothers us so much, we need to find funding mm -hmm. because it's our problem. Yes. Let's find funding and then focus advocacy first on educating people very well yeah. about what it is. Luckily, as a result of the advent of the internet, there's so much information out there for people who are educated and have access. Yeah. But now we're talking about people who are poor, who might ordinarily be illiterate, who might be based in rural areas and so on and so forth. We need to educate them as well. Yes. And make them understand that even if you cannot wrap your marriages around genotype and all this and all this, that's controversial, I won't go into it. Mm -hmm. Know that if you have a child that's showing such symptoms, chances are high that the child is not rich, the child is not a banjo, the child is not uh, on this earth to suffer you, the child could be genotype SS. And these are the options that are available to you where diet is concerned mm -hmm. in the event that you are too poor right. to go to hospital. In the rural areas, weirdly enough, they have access to healthy food, but they don't know. So they're less likely to eat vegetables, less likely to eat fruit, less likely to eat nuts. They want to eat red meat all the time, and so on and so forth. But so they do have access. So most most of them have gardens yeah. in their backyards yeah. and so on. Right. So, yeah. education so education is key. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it should be the first step. Okay. I still, that's, that's very important, and I, I'm all for that education as well, but too, there's no, sometimes there's no other way they can get these nutrients in the amounts, the concentrations that they need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, with, if, with, if with there are NGOs that can afford mm -hmm. to give those supplements and things, why not? They should. No, but I'm saying that there's need for funding to come into yeah. sickle cell. For indigenously, and we have a lot of rich organizations and rich individuals, individuals really, and so on, who can who can easily, yeah. even if it's just for their own locality and, and their own constituency. And I also feel the silence around uh, being genotype SS needs to disappear. Yeah. Uh, people who are in positions of authority who are genotype SS should identify with it. Yes. Should speak up. To speak up, right? There shouldn't be this whole shroud of mystery around it that makes it. Uh, somebody, Professor Wandebe. Yeah. I think he's currently based in Uganda. He is one of the foremost uh, people when you talk about uh, sickle cell and so on. Yeah. He wants either Uganda or Kenya. I'm getting my things in. But he emphasized to me that in East Africa, you're better off telling people you're HIV positive than telling them you're genotype SS. There's <laughs> such a stigma around it. Yeah? So that con conversation needs to be expanded around that. I, I, I totally agree. It has to be something that should be more front and center than what it is now. But unfortunately, we are out of time. I hope we can pick this up again sometime soon. Yeah, anytime. Okay. It's, it's, it, it seems that it's, it's, a, it's, it's a very wide thing yes, that uh, definitely. we can't do justice in just in five minutes. Multifaceted, mm. for sure. But I thank you so much for making the time. Thank you, Doc. And it has been totally educative. Thank you so much. I enjoyed myself, too. And uh, I hope people learned one or two things. I think they did. I think they did. Thanks again. Thank you. All right, folks. So there you have it. Uh, please uh, be sure to stay tuned for our other videos, uh, other shows on health in your hands. Remember, this is for you, the black person. And we'll, we'll be talking about women's issues very soon because that's a big issue, especially when you get to the 40, 45, 50 time when things begin to slow down and things sort of begin to get, get go haywire. What can you do about it? So we talk, we'll be doing a lot of information in several different areas. Remember, our outreaches are in Lagos and Abuja. Abuja this Friday and uh, Lagos next, next weekend. Uh, go to our website and you'll get more information. Till then, Stay strong and be healthy. Please, by the way, volunteers, we need volunteers. So if you can make out time, just find out. All right, folks, be sure to join us next week for more interesting topics on your health in your hands. God bless. See you soon.